the only thing they'll be able to do is to continue to print. Um, my partner, Jim, coined the phrase QE to infinity back in, I think, 2009, right after the first uh, QE started. Once they started up, he said there's no way they can stop. And that fits in with, with Richard Russell's inflate or die. You can never deflate the system. Um, you can't do that because what would happen is you'd have a, a deflationary push where the Fed would not be able to save things. It, they'd be basically pushing on a string. So the Fed at this point has been jawboning, and we've seen the absolute, I think it's the worst January since 1920 uh, for the stock market. And that's just based on the Fed jawboning. I mean, they're still, they're still in there with QE. That they're going to end, uh, they're going to end QE in March. And from that point forward, they're going to start to shrink their balance sheet. And I'm going to tell you that's a mathematical impossibility. Mm -hmm. If they actually do shrink their balance sheet, what they will do is they will collapse the entire uh, credit <coughs> facade, edifice, whatever you want to call it. The entire uh, credit structure will come down because, well, well, think about this. Since 2008, what's been going on? There's been nothing but life support for the financial system for the last 14, 13, 14 years now. This is a patient that cannot survive, cannot live without the life support. We're living in a world where everything's upside down and nothing makes sense. I saw in their dealership a, uh, a Ford Bronco that had like, it only had 500 miles on it. They put it right on the middle of the showroom floor. It sold originally for 66000 The guy turned it in, flipped it for some type of profit. Now they're selling it for 91000 that's insane. That's nuts. I mean, we live in insane world. Just take it one step further. You got gold and silver that cannot default in a world that's going to completely default, and they're being pressured by paper contracts. Nothing makes any sense whatsoever. Let me ask you a question: If if they're being, uh, we're we're hearing on the business channels, we're hearing across the board. The Fed's going to raise rates, blah, blah, blah. Maybe that's the plan is to blow the system up. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've said all along when everything is said and done, uh, they're going to have to kick the table over. And my number one pick for kicking the table over would be going through with what the practice or dry run was back in October with a cyber attack. Mm -hmm. What does that do? That burns the restaurant down and gets rid of all the evidence. Mm hmm. You know, that, that's really interesting because um, I think the Fed has already said they can't do a central bank digital currency without approval from Congress. And I don't think they almost need a crisis to force some of that stuff through, don't they? They need shit to Absolutely. blow up. They need to create right. the next crisis. So remember TARP, the, the TARP bill back in 2008? Initially it right. failed. It was voted down by Congress. And then they right. dialed 700 up. billion. Yeah, they dialed up the pressure. We're all going to die up. unless you vote yes. Yeah, <laughs> stock market tanks five hundred points or whatever it was, and so hey, tell Congress right. to go. Tell Congress to go vote again until they get it right. That's what I think. Right. One of those uh, Summers or one of Larry Summers or one of those guys said at the time. And, well, Jim, uh, go back, go back two years. Just over two years ago, we had the repo crisis in uh, I think it was September eighteenth of two thousand nineteen, where the Fed had to step up every night and put a hundred billion dollars into the overnight system to cap, you know, to keep rates from going back to 10%, which is where they went overnight. And then COVID came along. Mm -hmm. Was that not convenient? Yeah, it was. I mean, was. COVID slowed down the demand. COVID created less demand for credit. So it took, it was a pressure valve, whatever you want to call it. It was like GLD was for gold back in 2004, 2005. It diverted capital from real gold to paper or whatever. Um, hey, I got another question for you, Jim. Uh-oh. How is it possible that these automakers, look at the look at the stocks, Toyota, Ford, General Motors. How is it possible that these automakers' stocks are trading close to their 52-week highs, at least above the, the mid-range, but yet they're not selling any cars? I mean, go to any car dealer and they've got, you know, 12 cars, 18 cars, and mm -hmm. in the past, they had 300 of them. So That's right. how is it that these stocks are pushing, you know, how are these stocks bid? 
Yeah, I mean that's that's a, you know, hey, the Fed prints crazy amounts of uh, dollars and puts it into the system, and weird things. It's got to go somewhere. It's got to go somewhere, so it's going to speculation. Right. Does it make sense to buy yep. bonds? I mean, are you going to buy bonds at one point seven, one point eight percent, a ten year bond? Let well, me be Jim Kramer. Think- You're an idiot. Yeah, I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm not buying a one. I'm not. How buying- could you? How could you lend your money? On a ten-year bond at one point eight percent, or a thirty-year bond at whatever it is, two and a quarter percent. Yeah. And you know inflation that they're telling you is seven percent, but the real inflation, if you look at John Williams, is fifteen percent. So you're locking in absolutely huge losses year after year. You're an yeah. idiot if you buy bonds. Well, yeah. I mean, it, it's it's a big question. It's a big question. High inflation, a lot of instability in the world. Gold and silver should be launching. Why do they have this albatross around their neck? Well, let me put it this way. Silver silver is the fuse, if you will. Um, and actually, there was an article out uh, yesterday by Sprott, uh, Sprott Money that showed the GDX chart and the silver chart. So that's miners and silver have been in absolute lock, lockstep for at least the last five years. The reason they cannot let either miners or silver run loose and, and go to a, a true clearing price, which is probably many, many multiples above where we are now, is if either the miners or silver took off, then you start to get serious, and there's already serious bids under the cash market, but you'd have speculators running to gold. Mm-hmm. And if you had gold at, even today, let's say you had gold at 2500 or $3,000, that would certainly be calling into question uh, the veracity of the dollar, which leads to the next step. And the most important step is then it brings into the question the ability of the U.S. Treasury to borrow. And that's what it's all about. The entire world runs on credit and, and the biggest debtor in the world is the U.S. Treasury. So if you put a, a roadblock or a bump in the road or whatever for the U.S. Uh, Treasury to borrow, basically you're shutting down the entire credit market. And Mm -hmm. silver is the fuse. You couldn't have silver go to $300 and and gold stay where it is. There's no way. Yeah. So they have to keep any and all excitement away from the miners and silver. And the reason being, when these things run, and you've seen it in the past, when miners run, when silver runs, they make huge percentage runs. Mm Mm-hmm. So they, they cannot allow those two out of the box because then it infects uh, gold. You'll get speculation and in, more speculation into gold. And that calls into question the dollar and thus the ability to borrow. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now let's continue. Wow. Well, you know, I, I already I already know what the comments in this video are going to say, and they're going to say, "Why should anyone be buying silver and gold in such a manipulated market?" Right? It's it's going to be like you know because what, you're you getting know? it out of this at a huge discount. Yeah, that exactly. <laughs> I mean, it's, think about it. Yeah, that's if the they, answer. You're first off, you're getting it at a huge discount, and gold and silver are the only two monies on the planet that cannot bankrupt in a world that's going to completely bankrupt. Yeah, that's true. You're going to have you're going to have credit capital that's just fleeing left and right out of out of, you know, fear of of uh, bankruptcy, out of fear of default. And it, they're going to gravitate back to gold and silver because they're the only monies. They're really the only asset on the that can't default. So a lot of people say, all right, when i've been hearing this for 10 years right i've been waiting 10 years bill actually you know to to answer that type of troll uh comment they're asking when and i would say pretty much open your eyes it's happening right before your eyes because going back to the narratives everything that they're they're telling you is bullshit if the if the media tells you something like 90 plus percent of the time it's wrong Mm -hmm. and if you get censored Basically, 100% of the time, you're right. So if everything is bullshit, why is the the current 
uh, supposed price of gold and silver. Why is that true? We live in the most indebted financial system in the history of history, no matter how you look at it, no matter what ratio you look at, um, debt to GDP, debt to cash flow, you know, debt to anything is higher today than it has ever been in all of history. And at the same time, the Fed is telling you, well, we're going to raise interest rates to cool the economy down and slow inflation. Well, no, you're not going to do that. You're going to raise interest rates and you're going to blow the debt bubble to pieces. Mm -hmm. It's math. When you blow the debt bubble to pieces, everything defaults. Mm -hmm. It's a, it will be one huge chain of defaults. And the only things that can't default are gold and silver. That's no, why uh, you own gold and silver to preserve your wealth, not to quote, make money. Yeah. The, um, that default cycle, what a lot of people don't realize is a lot of these hedge funds and banks, um, it's counterparty risk. Someone's on the other side of right. every trade, right? Exactly. Someone's, yes. And, and when the interest rates start changing dramatically, there's tons of derivatives. There's tons of credit default swaps right. that start changing yep. dramatically in value. So someone's losing right. money when these big moves happen. And when some- Every time somebody wins, somebody loses. Yeah. And what happened in 20, 2008, you know, certain hedge funds started blowing up because they were on the wrong side of these trades. And mm -hmm. then it became a counterparty risk issue. Then Bear Stearns blows up and gets bailed out. Then Lehman Brothers bit, uh, blows up. Right. And, and so we're watching for that right now, right? That's when the crisis begin, when, when someone fails and we start having bailouts, right? Right. Yeah, well, so. you know, one other thing, uh, the real world, you're talking about the financial world. If you talk about the real world, and I've used this analogy probably a hundred times, how many uses of credit do you think there are in a loaf of bread? I mean, I, I could name eight or 10. So if any of those uses, if any of those uh, uses of credit become unavailable, so does the loaf of bread. Mm. Oh, you mean the, you mean, I the, mean it's the, it's the bread, it's your green beans. It, mm -hmm. Right. The whole supply chain is supported by credit is my point. Yeah. Every, every movement of the product that you get at the grocery store. I mean, the fertilizer, the seed, uh, harvesting, going to silos. Yeah, that's right. Um, I mean, that's that's only like the first one third. Then you got the processors, you've got truckers in between, and it goes to the, you know, finally goes to the grocery store, and probably twenty percent or more um, buy groceries with their credit card. Mm -hmm. So I mean, the the product won't exist, and the ability to to, to purchase won't exist because if, if credit fails, so does your bank. Do you want to know one thing about crypto? I made over 3000% in profit in a few weeks. Fact is, the traditional financial system, the traditional money system makes you poor, not rich. If you want to earn 500,000, 1 million dollar, you have to wait until you're 50, 60, 70 in the traditional financial system and you probably will still be broke and you will be old. This is not a sexy combination as you can imagine. But the question is, how can you start in crypto and make these profits? Where to invest? Where do you start? My name is Gunnar and I'm from Germany, as you can hear, and things are a little bit different in Germany. More about that later on. The fact is, there are lots of different cryptocurrencies. It's a gigantic universe where beginners and professionals get easily lost. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. There are seven key steps you need to follow to become successful in this market. You have to know them. And if you fail one of them, it's literally impossible to succeed in this market. Just an example, one of the key points is your exchange. And one of the biggest are, for example, Binance and Coinbase. These are trusted and well-established exchanges. But, and this is a big but, you won't find the super profitable coins on those exchanges. The unknown super profitable coins that get gigantic profits are not traded on those kind of exchanges. They are traded on much smaller insider platforms that are barely known. And I can tell you what those super secret exchanges are and why they are so profitable. And another super important thing are the right information sources. The point is, the internet is gigantic. There are hundreds and hundreds of YouTube channels, blogs, pages, 
and much, much more. And there are also market makers and influencers. For example, Elon Musk, he is not a crypto guy. But the moment he recommended Dogecoin, it went through the roof. To the moon, so to say. But why did he recommend it? Where did he hear it from? He didn't hear it from newspapers. And believe me, he is listening to someone. But you have to know who and you have to react before he is reacting. This is really, really important. And these are only two of the seven steps you have to follow in order to be successful in crypto. And if you want to know all of these steps in much more detail, and if you want to have a comprehensive checklist, here's what you should do. There is a link below this video. Click on this link and you will get the opportunity to subscribe to my channel. Click on the link and you will see a video where I explain the next steps. So see you soon. Click on the link now. I'll see you there.